So you you mentioned that at the at the Big Bang in the early days, um, things were pretty homogeneous. Yes, but uh, here we are sitting on Earth, <laughs> two uh, hairless apes, you could say, with microphones. In talking about the brief history of things, you said it's much harder to describe Sweden than it is um, uh, the, the universe. So there's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of interesting yes. details here. So. How does this complexity come to be, do you think? It, it seems like there's these pockets. Yeah. We don't know how rare of like, uh, where well, hairless apes just emerge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then that came from the initial soup that was homogeneous. Was that, uh, is yeah, that an it accident? Was, well, we understand there, we understand in broad outlines how it could happen. We certainly don't understand why it happened exactly in the way it did, or, but but uh, or you know there, there are certainly open questions about the origins of life and how inevitable the emergence of intelligence was and and how that happened. But uh, in the very broadest terms, uh, the universe early on was ve quite homogeneous, but not completely homogeneous. Uh, there are there were part in ten thousand fluctuations in density within this primordial plasma, and uh, as time goes on, there's an instability which causes those density contrasts to increase. There's a gravitational instability where it's denser, the gravitational attractions are stronger, and so that brings in more matter, and it gets even denser, and so on and so on. So. So there's a natural tendency of matter to clump because of gravitational interactions. And then the equation is complicated <laughs> when you have lots of things <laughs> clumping together. Uh, then, you know, then, then we know what the laws are, but we have to, to a certain extent, wave our hands about what, what, what happens. But uh, the basic understanding of chemistry says that if things and and the physics of radiation tells us that if as things start to clump together they can radiate give off some energy so they don't just they slow down they as a result they lose energy they can conglomerate together cool down form things like stars form things like planets and so in broad terms there's no mystery there's uh, you know, that that that's what the scenario that's what the equations tell you should happen, but because it's a, a process involving many, many fundamental individual units, uh, the, the the application of the laws that govern simply individual units to these things is is very delicate, uh, or you know, computationally very difficult, and more profoundly. Uh, the equations have this probability of chaos or sensitivity to initial conditions, which tells you tiny differences in the initial state can lead to enormous differences in the subsequent behavior. So, so physics, fundamental physics, at some point says, okay, chemists, biologists, this is your problem. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and then again, in broad terms, we know how, uh, it's conceivable that that the uh, humans and things like that can can uh, that how complex structure can emerge. It's a matter of uh, having the right kind of temperature and the right kind of stuff. So you need uh, you need to be able to make chemical bonds that are reasonably stable and be able to make complex structures. And we're very fortunate that carbon has this ability to make uh, uh, backbones and, and elaborate branchings and things. So you can get complex things that we call biochemistry. And, uh, and yet the bonds can be broken a little bit with the help of energetic injections from the sun. So you have to have both the possibility of changing, but also the a useful degree of stability. And we know at that very, very broad level, physics can tell you that it's conceivable. Yeah. If you want to know what actually, what, what's, what, what really happened? <laughs> what really can happen? The then you have to. Things. Then you have to work a bit to go to chemistry. If you have, to, if you want to know what actually happened, then you really have to consult the fossil record and biologists. And so, so, uh, but but it's it. So these these 
ways of addressing the issue are complementary in a sense. They they uh, they uh, uh, they use different kinds of concepts. They use different uh, languages, and they address different kinds of questions. But they're they're not inconsistent. They're mm -hmm. just complementary. <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of interesting to think about those early fluctuations mm. as our earliest ancestors. Yes, that's right. So it's far, it's amazing to think that, uh, you know, this is the modern answer to the, uh, or the modern version of uh, the what the Hindu f philosophers had that art thou, if you ask what okay that <laughs> those those little quantum fluctuations in the early universe are the seeds out of which uh, complexity, including uh, plausibly humans, really evolve. You don't need anything else. <laughs>